Hello, hello, hello. Real Opinions are back. Hi. Yay. Back. We've got some reviews today. Captain America, Civil War, Bastille Day, Eye in the Sky. Friend request. <laughs> you <laughs> said that was no, such no, exactly disdain. I think that's yeah, the exact same. Yeah. That's the way you should describe it. Yeah. <laughs> some great things to look forward to. But it's been a while, so uh, it's only fitting that we start with this song. Oh, yeah. James, James is pretty excited about this. Here's Thin Lizzy with the boys are back in town. Oh, okay. So that was Thin Lizzy with the boys are back in town because the boys are well and truly back in town. <laughs> they are. <laughs> uh, it was really? worth the cheesy joke. <laughs> it was. It was. It's been about four, five weeks? What, since we, we last embarrassed ourselves on the radio? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean was, embarrassed? I was going to uh, go against you on that, but then I realized you were saying on the radio. Because it's been uh, way shorter than uh, that for yeah. embarrassment in general. <laughs> yeah, we've embarrassed ourselves on camera. <laughs> <laughs> we've done lots of things. What's yeah. up first on the show then? Uh, so we'll start with Civil War, I guess. Cause yeah, because we've the, seen it. The, the, yeah, we saw it. That was that was made us feel important. For <laughs> Very important. Yeah, it was. There was loads of important people there as well. Graham Norton was there. Yeah, he looked he really miserable. Oh. He did, didn't he? He did. Yeah. yeah, he had this big old beard, and he didn't look very fabulous oh, at the all. The beard. It's the beard that makes people miserable. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, via the medium of radio, you you can't. This doesn't come across. But Ben has a beard. So. <laughs> <laughs> I In case you've never sure seen one of our videos, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just like put. We should just put up a picture of Ben now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just like this is him. I thought this was going to turn into your new uh, review the audience. So you review each one of the celebrities that you saw at the screening. <laughs> we, who else did we see? We saw some of the Empire people. Uh, yeah. Um, we saw was... Peter Bradshaw. Yes. This um, isn't a review. This is just a name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's, we let's, saw uh, the this Radio is... Five guy, uh, Robbie Collins. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> this, I, this kept, is, I kept hoping you. David Morris. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't. Anyway, the film, the film. Yes, let's the actually film. talk about the film. The it's film. really, really, yeah. really good. Well, I've already, uh, we've already got a review up on, uh, on Real Opinions that yes. I've done, but obviously you weren't able to talk about what I you thought. I don't so. really have that much to add other well, than I, I you, agree you with most with what things. what you said, because I've already said most of it, and I'll just sort of like feedback. I, f- I feel like I probably have a few more negative things than you, because okay. I, did, I did really, really love it. Uh, I'll try and I mean I'm not going to start with like general introduction in case yeah you, seen that you do the general introduction okay so obviously Civil War uh, is following quite closely off the back of Age of Ultron in terms of everything that happens at the end with in Sokovia mm-hmm. um, and also following off the back of the Winter Soldier and basically what's happened is uh, due to a, an inciting incident at the beginning of the film the event the UN have basically called for the Avengers to agree to these accords that will make them answerable to the UN rather than a private organization and there's a split between like Captain America's side and Iron Man's side Captain America's like no we shouldn't have to we should be able to be independent because all this red tape could restrict us and Iron Man's like no we need to be controlled so they have a mild disagreement then uh Captain America's Bucky his, <laughs> Captain his Bucky. America's Bucky gets involved uh because he's still wanted after the events of the Winter Soldier and he Something happens to do with Bucky that basically escalates the whole situation, mm-hmm. and then civil war stuff happens. Happens. Heroes attack heroes. It's, it's and then brutal. Baron Zemo somewhere too. Oh yeah, he's not Baron. called Baron Zemo though, is he? They he's just called Zemo. Zemo. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I was waiting for the whole Baron reveal. And I was mm. like, what makes him a Baron? Like, there's actually been... nothing really that makes him Baron Zemo. No, he's just a character. He's just a character yeah. called Zemo. I like and him. It's... He's just not in it enough. That that's the problem. I think. I mean, this is one of my problems. I mean, I should preface this by saying I love this film. Mm. I pretty much agree with almost every, all of the upsides you say. I also agree with the controversial <laughs> thing that you said about Black Panther not necessarily being the best. I think, I mean, he's certainly good. He's entertaining, but he's it's a fine. bit, yeah, Bland. he's just a bit too serious. It's I think just, that's the problem. It's just, there's nothing that distinguishes him. You get all the other characters cracking wise and kind of mm. having this great chemistry, and then he's just kind of a bit of a soul he sucker in the corner. He's like, he's yeah. like Henry Cavill. He's, he's like, yeah, he's exactly. Like that level he's got a bit more. Movie. He's got a bit more charisma than Henry Cavill, but he's still a, and J- Chadwick Boseman is quite good at it. To be fair, it's the writing. It's not him. Mm. But it's he just is a bit too serious and a bit too like everything's a bit dull. But him aside, all the other heroes are great. Even Falcon's great. Yeah, Falcon which is, won me over. Like, which is th- cool. That, there's a scene where him and uh, the Winter Soldier are in a car together, mm. and there's just a very like little joke. It's not like a big comedy it's, moment, yeah. but it's really funny. And it was yeah. like, I like Falcon now. Falcon, like, is good. yeah, it's... and he has a couple of good one-liners as well. Exactly. There's. It's the film as a whole is excellent, amazing, one of the best Marvel movies yet. 
definitely, definitely go see it. Yeah. To nitpick a few things, because I feel like we need to say something, because there are people out there saying five stars, nothing wrong with it. There I was, are. Th- I, I was one of the people who gave it five. There are. There no, are. Say nothing was wrong with it. That's true. Yeah, there are things wrong with it. Yeah. I think, like you said, Zemo isn't. In it, particularly no. great. I think he's good. I think he would be good if he was in it more. Yeah, he needs to he be needs to developed be in a bit more. He needs a bit more personality. And mm-hmm. I feel like they didn't necessarily a hundred percent need him. They I don't get him, why he's in the that. background, and yeah. I, it kind of adds a neat little way of tying up some character threads mm-hmm. and stuff. But at the same time, it feels like whenever it cuts back to him, it's like him again. He almost really? feels a little obligatory. But yeah, I, 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 exactly. I, I like I know a lot of people have criticized him as like another sort of mm. Marvel like D list villain. Mm. I liked him. I liked him more than say Ronan or Really Whiplash or you know, a lot of those really bland I think nothing villains. It's because well no, at least Whiplash has whips and like <laughs> Something that makes him cool. Something that no, makes him a supervillain. Like, Zemo is... is just a guy. Yeah, well, that's why I liked him. Because all of the other Marvel ones just have... They're just bland people with powers that want to take over the world. Whereas Zemo is just a guy who hates the Avengers. I guess. For a reason that you don't know I... at the start. But it made him... Because he, he therefore did something different. Because he didn't have powers. He couldn't just sort of turn up for a boss battle at the end. And was instead, like, manipulating them and stuff. And I thought that was kind of cool. Because there aren't any villains in the MCU so far that have done that. They've I guess all just so, sort of but turned up for boss fights at the end. I think there's a reason why no one's really done that, though, because it doesn't <laughs> really fit within a superhero film. It's a bit too... But either way. And then my only other problem with it is mm. that I feel like as amazing as the airport sequence is, like arguably one of the best set pieces Marvel have ever done. I would say the... But yeah, if not the. It's incredible, it's long, but it's hilarious, and I, ne- I never wanted it to end. <laughs> but when it does end... I feel like the rest of it is kind of... You just want that back again. You want that level of fun back. I, and the characters are so... Like, Spider-Man's so exciting. Ant-Man's really great in this as well. I wanted... I just wanted to see more of them. And then you end up back with Iron Man and Captain America and they're doing the whole kind of I, I think by plot that thing point, again. I was engaged enough to not mind because they, the, they did the usual spectacle thing that mm. all these bigger Marvel films like Age of Ultron did. But they did it two-thirds of the way through yeah so that they could then do something a little different for the ending i kind of like i mean I, I like the ending but at the same time there were moments in it where i was thinking back to the airport more fight. Just yeah i was Ant-Man's just game. playing back to the airport fight again in my head and yeah, I was the, like, the airport fight is definitely the highlight but i don't yeah. mind that it's two-thirds of the way through no cause... it's better that than what the first thor did and have its best action scene right, right at, the, at beginning. the beginning yeah, yeah. they didn't yeah, do that true. but on the um, whole, it's just a great, great, yeah, the, great uh, film. The action is really good. Obviously, the airport really well staged. The, the airport as well. one is obviously amazing, and it's filled with things that, if you are on the internet, you'll probably have spoiled for you because you yeah. you told me one of the things that happens, and I wish I didn't know to an extent. Sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. But I know that if I didn't know it, I would have gone like, "Whoa!" I'll, I'll, I'll I mean, point I out. Went, yeah, I'll point out to everybody else. It was something I expected to happen anyway. Mm. And it was something that was spoiled for me, not necessarily by the internet, but, but by, by Lego, Lego, by Lego, yeah, which is weird. Oh, yeah. But um, and then the other action sequences are great. The smaller ones are still yeah. really good. I, bit... I said they were a little choppily edited, but it seemed to that became less of a problem as it went on. Yeah, definitely. I, which I thought was weird, but like the opening one was very cutty. Yeah, but the the staging's good. They do really cool things with the powers as well. It's not just like they just punch and kick like mm. they do inventive things with like how they choreograph and how they actually use their powers against each other Thinking... like there's a thing spider-man does with definitely yeah uh, ant-man that i won't spoil that's really cool yes it's a really yeah, cool yeah. thing there are thinking back to it actually there is one more thing one more problem i have with it. <laughs> just a tiny i feel like that mm. negative guy that has to pick yeah. all the problems but just come to think of it it was something that i i forgot about after it happened yeah. but thinking about it um because you get so caught up in the film that you don't really care about it. But right at the very, very beginning, the inciting incident, yeah, which kicks off the whole Sokovia Accords yeah, thing, yeah. Um, does happen very quickly. And I it was know, I, it I was a little bit, it took me a minute to be like, oh, hang on a minute, okay. I, I kind of liked how they did it, because it's kind of like almost like a James Bond opening sequence. Mm. Like, you just think you're just getting a random action sequence. I really like that whole action sequence. Yeah, it's, it's just cool, the it's very cool specific thing in. that happens. I know the thing you mean. Yeah. yeah. I guess, I don't know. I don't remember it being that quick, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah. But I did like how they opened it with the James Bond action yeah. sequence, because it was a great way to use crossbones without having to force him into the plot. Exactly. Just, oh, we'll open with the fight sequence. Because I thought when he was, was popping cool. up in the trailer, 
trailers, I was like, why are the hell is Crossbones in this as well? This is going to be yeah. way too heavy. But it's just like an they, I think that's the best thing about the film. You. There's so many characters in it, it but they balance them all. Yeah, they yeah, balance them all so, so well. And it, like you, we were saying this before, like you were getting annoyed that people were comparing it to Batman and Superman and saying that it was pointing out how it made uh, Batman and Superman look worse, but it really does. Yeah, it does. Batman it does. and Superman had... It feels like four it main characters and this and has about a, seven or eight still a mess but this yeah. has all of these and this has like every single one of them gets a moment to shine exactly. and feels developed properly exactly like, there isn't a single member of the of the avengers that doesn't i don't feel like i know a little bit better after this film. exactly i know yeah. it's like particularly people like vision who are kind of rushed into the end of age of ultron and yeah. now actually get to sort now of, they get arcs and they yeah. get yeah um, and obviously, uh, just to the, the Spider Man's great as well. Oh yeah, Spider-Man, Spider Man is great. Spider, I mean, I'm a huge Tobey Maguire Spider Man fan because I love the first Sam Raimi film. But mm. in terms of general characterness, this is probably our best shot at a proper Marvel comic Spider Man. Yeah, it like, feels it's the most he, comic. Book yeah, he yeah. feels the most like mm. naturally Spider Man. It's because so. he's, he's actually young, and so that's he true. He feels yeah. like a kid. Yeah. Um, and, and one last thing. Because the whole film is so heavily centered on the Cap and Bucky thing, which I've said over and over again, I did not care about. By the end of this film, I cared about it. Likewise. I genuinely yeah. cared, and I never thought... I'd, I thought I might leave it going, oh, it was cool, the action was cool, but I didn't think I'd leave saying I actually cared about, like, about like the was. central conflict, which I did. So there you go. Yeah. Civil War is ace. Yeah. It, no, it is. It's really, really good. <laughs> um, right. Do you have a rating? Because I already gave mine. It was nine. Um, I'm going to go nine. Yeah. L- a lower Thanks. nine, but a nine nonetheless. So, cool. I, I feel like we have a song now from another film that we saw over Easter. Mm. Yes. Which kind of should. divided opinions, didn't it? Not with us, though. Really. Yeah. We were all kind of more or less on the exact same page. Yeah, I thought, yeah. James, I thought you would have disliked it a it, yeah. lot more. I yeah. liked it more than I expected to like it. Mm. I didn't love it, but I didn't. And I, did, and I liked it less than I expected to like it. Likewise. And I feel like we're at the sort of same level of liking yeah. it as a result. Yeah. yeah. And we are, of course, talking about Hardcore Henry. Yeah. Uh, the first first person action movie. And this is introduce the song because I forgot. Who said. This is Frank Sinatra's "I've Got You Under My Skin." So that was Frank Sinatra with "I've Got You Under My Skin," which has arguably the coolest scene in Hardcore Henry. It's also in Gamer in, in almost oh, the yeah. exact same scene yeah. because it's where um, it's well the guy from Dexter, Michael C. Hall. Yeah. He's controlling a load of and he's making them the all like and that's, that's basically yeah. the exact same scene. The yeah. exact same song. Really weird. Except with Charlotte Copley, with many different Charlotte Copleys. Yeah. Is that a spoiler for it? Then? Not really. Not really. No. No. no, no. It kind of I, I feel like that's, all just kind of, that's just their continuing kind of reference to Neville Dean the Tailor. Yeah, isn't no, it, it does. Yeah. I thought this must be intentional at that yeah. point. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think we're going to be talking about um, another. Uh, I don't know what you thought of the film, actually. Uh, and another. Another. Decent film. Oh, okay. Decent. Uh, yeah. Surprisingly I've read, decent. I've read two reviews of it so far, and they both gave it five stars. Really? Which confused yeah. me because mm. I was like, it doesn't look like a five star no, film. No, it did not. But uh, no. Okay. Well, it's not a five star film. I'll, I'll put that out there. In my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> what film um, are you talking about, James? I am talking about Eye in the Sky, which is a new film out <laughs> at the moment. Uh, I think so, probably the sort of the most notable thing about this film the thing that's kind of getting a lot of attention is the fact that it is the last film uh featuring alan rickman is that not the alice in wonderland one yeah there's alice through the looking okay it's the last yeah okay yeah, there you go. Yeah. um so uh and i will say i'll start by saying that normally when when an actor has died there'll be a kind of quite a lot of clamor around the film uh and I, often i find that their kind of their performance gets a bit overstated Mm. you know in terms of how good it actually is but um alan rickman is genuinely quite good in it and he sort of has a sort of a similar role to uh the kind of role he plays in love actually which (laughs) might not make much sense (laughs) but if you see the film it will make sense because (laughs) because he's like this about drones yes but he's a sort of floundering father figure but also but also uh a high level military Colonel, <laughs> just like in Love Actually, just like it's in practically Love a Actually. sequel. <laughs> uh, but but basically, I think it is quite clever casting because the whole point is you're meant to think, oh, this man has a, a, a young daughter, which links to the sort of the right. key narrative element, which is the fact that there is a drone strike going to be happening on this sort of uh, building in which there are terrorists in this kind of like faux ISIS sort of group. Right. Obviously, they couldn't put ISIS mm. in it. Um, but basically the operation is kind of, uh, 
halted by this little girl who happens to be round the corner selling bread. Yeah. Uh, and that's not a spoiler to say that because the tension of the film is, you know, will the girl survive? Will they go ahead and press the button and, and fire? And I know that doesn't really sell the film, but it is genuinely quite tense. So you've got this kind of this deliberate setup of, oh, these people have children. Ah, here is a child in, <laughs> I think it's Ethiopia. Right. right. You know, feel feel sympathy. And that is probably the weakest point of the film is the way it does really push this little girl in your face. Like, it really <laughs> wants you to care about this little girl. And uh, maybe it sounds really cold, um, but I didn't care about this little girl. Newsflash, James hates kids. I hate kids, yeah. <laughs> Massacre them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna cut that little <laughs> clip out. Yeah, no, no, that is not of you. Um, so, so yeah, sort of in terms of the sort of the style of the film, it kind of has a sort of Paul Greengrass kind of feel to it. Yeah, sort of. And I'm not just saying that because it has uh, Bakad Abdi, in, uh, Abdi mm. in it, who is again quite good, but sort of plays a similar role. Academy Award nominee, Barker. Yeah, well, BAFTA winning. Yeah. BAFTA winning. Um, I mean, you know, he's good. Yeah, he pretty much plays the same role, kind of, in a way. <laughs> um, but but the thing that I thought the film did best was it kind of exposes this sort of, all the problems of sort of bureaucracy and all this sort of decision making. Mm. And, you know, with a drone strike, it all comes down to someone pulling the trigger or giving giving the sort of the go ahead. And it shows that how no one wants to take responsibility of this. So they always like they pass it on to their superiors. And it has to, the decision is sort of baited around several people. And it's, it is a genuinely frustrating experience to watch it. And I thought that was quite good because I really thought the film was setting out to do that. It was setting out to frustrate you. And it was, it was setting out to make you think, you know, like, for goodness sakes, mm. press the button. Shoot to kill. <laughs> <laughs> kill the children. Kill but, them. But Did then there's this small child in the way. There's this small <laughs> child in the way. Um, but what I couldn't help but think a lot of the people in the film are very bad at their jobs. And it's, <laughs> it, it's a sort of, it's a, because they are sticking so closely to sort of Hollywood cliches in, in the, oh, you know, all these sort of ethical, moral dilemmas that they're facing. And, if they were actually people that were good at their jobs, they would have probably not even hesitated and pressed the button. Because no, 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 because it is all it is all justified, and you know they have to sort of work out the the, the maths of the probabilities of. I'm not really selling the film here. <laughs> From the sounds, it, it just I, sounds I, I, like. To be honest, I think you've made it sound more appealing to me by making it by because because when you say that whole frustrating thing, it makes me think of like something like Zodiac. And kind of yeah, go, like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. No, and it is, and it is like that in in that sense. It is you do really sort of share in that frustration. Um, and it does, it does feel, apart from what I've said about the characters and not being very good at their jobs, it does, it does seem like it's quite a sort of a realistic account yeah. of how, how a sort of drone attack would go down. Have hmm. you seen, there was another film about drones that came out last year called Good Kill. No, I haven't Ethan seen Hawke. that. It's terrible. Is it bad? It's so <laughs> terrible. That's why I thought this would be terrible. Because it <laughs> but, tried to do the whole like, oh, drones, it's difficult being a drone pilot because... You have to have the responsibility of killing innocent people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it was just Ethan Hawke being a drunk and an abusive husband, and it was very, very boring. Well, that was what I th- I expected it to be more heavily leaning towards that side of a plot yeah. because it's got Aaron Paul in it, um, and I thought there would be a kind of you know he'd have his own narrative mm. and stuff. But Aaron Paul is basically just shown sort of doing his job, just doing right. his job, and the film is basically centered around this this drone attack. So is it all in like real time then? Kind of, yeah. So yeah. it's just one attack. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, which again I was surprised mm. about. Um but it does you know, it does work quite well and so that was good. But as I say, it did have a sort of a realistic kind of aesthetic to it. But there are some strange drone things. And I mean, you know, I don't know what the latest drone technology is. But I don't know <laughs> if they have Drones that look like birds Flies. and I thought, hover- yeah, that yeah. Was weird in the trailer. Yeah. That looked, that oh, looked like what you mean the little bug thing? thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that like, did look know, a bit strange. Incredibles and Syndrome has that parrot. They have, rubber, yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. Oh no, that made me like throw the film out. <laughs> yeah, well, this I is can, the thing. And so at that stage, I was, I, mean. I was sort of sniffing at it. But apart from that, and especially what, as I say, you know, all the sort of all the corridors of power and all that sort of stuff, that did work really well. And I was, I was left very frustrated, which I think is what mm. what the film was aiming to do. Mm, it was aiming yeah. to show the difficulties of making these decisions. Um, mm. And, cool. and yeah, it was genuinely quite engaging. Most of the film, I kind of went through it thinking, right, yeah, 
six, seven out of ten. Mm. But actually, I have to sort of think of the, the experience of watching the film and the tension and stuff. And I do have to say that it's it's an eight out of ten, really. Oh, oh okay. and I was I'm very Listen. pleasantly surprised with that. Cool. There you go. So there you go. Eight out of ten. Cool. Eye in the sky. And cool. to, to follow that up, we have quite a tenuously linked song, very tenuous don't we? link. Well, I said... Because Eye in the Sky, weirdly enough, doesn't have any pop music in it. It doesn't have any pop music <laughs> in it, no. Shockingly. Um, but obviously, Alan Rickman in it. And as I said, very much like his role in Love Actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we have a song from Love Actually. What's the song, James? <laughs> <laughs> the song is Love Is All Around Us by uh, Wet Wet Wet. Here it is. Yes, that was <laughs> Love Is All Around by Wet Wet Wet. And it was a pretty tenuous link to begin with. To begin with. <laughs> to uh, be fair, this is in Love Actually you know, in the sense that song, in, No, it? it is in the sense that Bill Nye accidentally sings this version when he's supposed to be singing yeah. the other one. Christmas is all around. Yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, it sort of counts. But yeah, I was just thinking because it's the same director, oh, wait, isn't is it? For Notting Hill or for, for, for Wayne's it's, it's Funeral? It's for one, one of the Richard Curtis films. One of the Curtis yeah. It's for, some, it's some, for, it's for something <laughs> which had the same actor in. So Alan Rickman was in Eye in the Sky. He was also in Love Actually, which was directed by Richard Curtis. Well, he have directed <laughs> either Notting Hill or <laughs> Four Weddings and I think funeral. he wrote he Four Weddings and a Funeral, didn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 he's the right But yeah, there's a link somewhere. I think it is Four Wings in a Funeral. <laughs> well, oh, it's a good, good film-related song, <laughs> nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, that segues us really well into our next review <laughs> as well, doesn't it? Yeah, something less good and film-related. Uh, we're yeah, going to be talking we about... Went to the Slackers yeah. Club to see <laughs> Friend Request, which I'm going to have to keep trying not to call Unfriended Yeah. because I keep calling it Unfriended. And the one thing this film did that I never thought any film would make me do is make me wish that I was watching Unfriended. And I feel like it's a psychological thing that I'm calling it Unfriended because I'd rather be talking about Unfriended. Also, they're just, they're just so close together. I mean, even though mm. like Unfriended has that whole gimmick that it's on the computer screen, that's basically just the same idea as that it's the terrifying, oh, I can't log off. Oh, no, I'm posting <laughs> bad things on the internet so, so the, the the jeopardy in this film is like it's it's like a south park episode there are bits where it's like if you can't delete your if you can't delete this then you're gonna have to delete your profile and the music goes <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh oh no but, but, and then like guys go this isn't what code normally looks like this is ghost code <laughs> i saw that in the trailer it looked really really that amusing. makes me want to pull my hair out <laughs> it, it looked like the matrix I, or something. Uh, but but the general plot is that this girl is she's the most popular girl in school oh my god and so she's got all her friends they yeah, all she, post she has, pictures she seems to add like 20 friends oh, a day for yeah. all the credits yeah callers. it's like, yeah in the credits she yeah. just has friend requests click, click, every click, click, second click, click. Yeah. that she's accepting and it's like she just got this group of friends oh they're all lovely ha 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 and then the, she spots the one lonely girl at school who looks a bit weird and she tries to be nice to her and then eventually uh, the girl's a bit too kind of clingy and so she gets a bit too kind of forceful with her clinginess. Mm. And so she kind of pushes her away. And when the when she pushes her away, the girl kind of has a mental breakdown and ends up, I don't know, is it spoiler? The, the, right, the, the crazy um, girl, the, the crazy girl kills Keegan. herself. Yeah. And from that point on, her ghost haunts the, the girl's Ooh. Facebook, making her say bad things and do <laughs> bad things. And then all the way through the film, you're watching her friend cook count drop down as if oh, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, so, <laughs> you. like, the idea is that, so, um, this, this account that she can't, now can't unfriend. Oh, that's terrifying. But then uh, <laughs> the, the account, whenever the account friends one of her friends, that means that that friend is going to die. die. Yeah. And so, and then wow. when when this friend will eventually, then this they has a the same montage that mm. you'll see every single time another friend dies of when the person goes into a room. Exactly. Is there something Literally. scary in here? Every <laughs> no. Single, no. Turn around right. into the. Uh, it's the exact same structure. Every single everyone kill yeah. goes like this. The friend is in a room. It's dark. <laughs> then they go. They hear a noise. They go out into a corridor and go. What was that? So they many go corridors. Into a mirror. Then there's uh. a jump scare. Then they go, ah, turn around, go back into another room. And then some bees are in the corner of the room. Always in yeah, the corner bees. of the room. Bees. 
Bees, yeah. not the bees. But the, I genuinely why want bees? Well, because, because they're special because black witch, bees, because, which witch, obviously means something. Because witches have bees. Did yeah. you know that? And then, <laughs> and, and, and then they get killed off screen. It's every single one. Yeah. It exactly sounds like you're making thing. it up. No, that's that's and legitimately like, it. Like, this is every- not. I, I I hesitate to spoil this film because I don't like to spoil things in reviews. But if you are surprised by what I'm about to tell you, then you are a moron. <laughs> but basically, there is a character who is very obviously going to go crazy like oh he's, he's just, I, if you ask if you if this is a spoiler then wow. his, his introduction <laughs> is a photo on the facebook where the girl is hugging her boyfriend and he's in the background giving them the stink eye yeah. and he's just like <laughs> so serial killer like, he's, he's, he's like he's like the typical like nice guy who's really and you know that he's like so kind of nice and like supportive for the girl that he's going to go insane mm. when he goes insane he genuinely turns into Charlie Kelly. <laughs> he genuinely does. He starts. He just starts saying like doing this weird, weird high pitched voice and going like, "Oh, the witch is coming!" And he's like, "What is he doing?" And he starts saying, "It's witches. mirrors. It's all about the and mirrors." He, he like switches to full on crazy yep. from like being kind of a little weird and a bit stalkery to just like popping up behind her with a knife, going, "Hello!" <laughs> like, what? When did this happen? And the ah, oh, the bees. The bees is <laughs> so the bees. stupid. And somehow, so every for every single one of these murders uh they somehow they managed to get away about how it was somehow filmed yeah. and so that the the kind of the focus for the girl besides the fact that you know her friends are dying it's more important that these videos are being uploaded to her facebook so she's losing her she's precious bad. friends yeah. and for, yeah so throughout the film as like it's progressing you said there's it literally it shows her friend count counting down yeah like like it's the, like the ticking bomb and oh it's just it's awful and, and they're like people no one believes her that she's not posting it and she can't yeah, he, she can't delete her account like, she can't block pure people evil to be posting the things that she's posting yeah. no one no everyone just assumes it's her like like because in this world hacking of facebook accounts doesn't exist yeah and the police unquestionably believe it and the police in this film the police the weirdest police i've ever seen like they just start, show up and start making jokes to people <laughs> who've just lost their friends it's yeah. really strange <laughs> and, the, just, like, the, and there's what well, Ice cracking. <laughs> it's like someone has died. <laughs> and they don't they don't come into the ending at all. It's like there's this just police officers that like show up to like, oh the police are asking, they say weird jokes and then they disappear. But at near the end then, they're like they just they show like they're just enjoying it, if yeah. anything. And then like so they turn around to this person that's literally just been brutally murdered, they just go, <sighs> Really? <laughs> yeah. To like this recent oh, it's just oh, the whole, completely and, and it's, detachment. It's, it's, just, from it's just the way that it tries to be relevant. With its no, with its scares is just it's so excruciating. It's just like it's horror that you can't close windows and that like you can't delete things from your timeline and just just not a, just it's just so cringy. That's why yeah. it feels like a South Park episode. I mean, it's just it's bizarre that I don't know. I mean, I get why they're doing social media horror now as like a thing because they think it'll be relevant to our generation, even though it's ridiculous. But when the entire like crux of the issue you, like you could just fix it by putting your phone face down <laughs> like what, what am i supposed to be scared at the whole problem is that they just they keep going on facebook and bad things happen and i'm not how am i supposed to mm. feel some tension from that at all whatsoever it's it sounds I, like it was made by someone that doesn't really understand well, that's social yeah, network. The word, the word, like because one thing and i i hate to say this because i hate to give any kind of praise to friend request but one thing that friend request kind of did was it sort of showed a slight awareness of how Facebook worked to an extent? I know there were some things like if you watch the Your Movie Sucks one, he does sort of explain how certain. Are you talking? Oh wait, you talking about unfriended? Un- un- unfriended. Yeah. You said friend request. I was, it's I, I'm this... too sure I said unfriended. No, you said uh, okay. you said friend request. Regardless, yeah. well, this is my problem. They got, yeah. <laughs> in unfriended, they did get some of that stuff kind of right. Like you some, felt like yeah. it was directed by someone who has a vague understanding of how this stuff works. In friend request, no. No. These, uh, these people don't know anything. Like the sound effects no. are wrong. You yeah, get, like there's the, that weird noise whenever the phone rings. Oh, it's yes, yeah. Oh, it's just, just like that. It's nothing like how actual Facebook works. Um, All of the scares that aren't social media and contemporary related are just the weakest jump scares I've seen in a long time. Mm. Like they are like, and again they're so structured. Like you, you yeah, said before, you it's just, that you know exactly like when that, they're you know coming. Exactly yeah. when it's coming, and it's just so kind of like it's it, it's not even loud. You know, like how with the Conjuring, they at least do kind of make you jump because mm. they're loud. Here it's just kind of like boo, <laughs> <laughs> boo. Oh and man! Then, and then that's it. The ghost doesn't really appear. It's the fact that I know I can tell that also with that they try to do this social media horror to kind of draw a bigger audience in, but again they don't have the commitment to it that Unfriended did, which yeah, makes I it sound that, strange. I but hate that this yeah, is making me. But it's because at least, like, 
Unfriended kind of sticks with this whole social media thing through the entire thing because it's on the computer screen. At least it sticks with its idea mm. of what's, what's supposed to be scary in this film. In this one, about halfway through, it starts slowly become about witchcraft. Yeah, and, the, and, and then by the end, come up again, yeah, does it but now? for the last third, no, no social media at all. It's so it just becomes boo. pointless. Boo. It's a, it's, it's very poor. Um, there's there's very little nice to say. I just got very angry. You at got this film. angry from minute one. It was hysterical. I, Before the film started, we were at the logos, and he he has never so quickly just hated something. <laughs> but the I, the logos yeah. pissed him off. But there uh, were a lot of them. Yeah. Oh no! It was just the fact that they did like this weird glitch effect where they just replayed them like over like making a beat, and it was like oh, I, I, I just can't stand any aspect of this film whatsoever. Yeah. I feel like it, the plot wasn't confusing at all, I, I gather, because I feel like I literally blanked out in bits of this film because I just stopped caring and I just wanted to... Oh. I don't hate it as much. Of a, it's my second least favourite film that I've seen in a cinema, I think, definitely. Or ever. Ever, yeah. What's, what's the worst? Monster Star Continent still. <laughs> still Monster Star Continent. But yeah, what, what would you give this out of, out of ten? Two. Two, I'd say two. Yeah, it's painful. Don't watch it. Mm. Yeah. It's just boring. Yeah, no, that's it's the, that's the main. Oh, I was, I was nearly falling asleep by the end. It uh, I could. T- really I, it feels like the kind of film that people would like switch onto on Netflix in a few years' time, and they wouldn't watch the whole thing through because it's yeah. so boring. Like it, it'll be forgotten. I think. Hopefully, mm. hopefully. Mm. But yeah, do we have um, uh, a, any music to kind of go into after this? Well, we, we have a song that Harrison's queued up because it's not. Technically, from friend request, it's the, the closest oh, I can get to yeah. a film that doesn't. I don't hate that is about Facebook. Is the social network? It is the best Facebook. <laughs> film, it's the, yeah. the only good social media related film. And this plays at the end of the social network. Uh, it's what was his actual title? Was, baby, uh, you're a rich. Is that was called? Yeah, by, uh, by the Beatles. So here is the Beatles. Baby, you're a rich. Right, sorry. This is the karaoke we a bit version. Of an <laughs> We will play the proper one now. <laughs> the proper one's not on here. It's all just covers. Okay. <laughs> well, there must be a proper one. Okay. No, no. Like, what can we put a cover you, on? Uh, or something? The Beatles. Baby. Rich man. Baby, you're a rich, rich man. man. Yeah. Uh, Should we just play the, the dialogue from the actual scene from the social network? <laughs> yeah, I think we could just do that. <laughs> so that was kind of. The Beatles, baby, you're a rich man. That was the, the end least scene of the social slick network. Piece of radio, probably that Surge has ever seen. Oh, yeah. Professional students in it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, up for the final review of the show. I can't wait. I know. <laughs> it's the film everyone's been waiting for, the film that no one forgot about, and the film that everyone has been totally on edge about all year because it's the most anticipated film of all. <laughs> it's, I'm big fucking- it's Bastille Day. Woo! Yeah, yes. I, I, it's here. It's I, finally here. I saw this last week and even I totally forgot it existed by this <laughs> point. It seems that I think it's a little bit unfortunate because when this film started production, it looked, it sounded like it was probably like quite a decent action movie. Had Idris Elba in it, had Richard Madden in it. Both of them are kind of big mm. upcoming actors. Has James Watts- Watkins directing it, who just made The Woman in Black. He made Eden Lake, which is actually really good. The Woman in Black, not so much. But he's a director that has some vague sense of talent. And it's an action movie. Like, where can you go wrong? Uh, But it's also an action movie about a bombing that happens in Paris. Mm. And then the events of November happened. And it it feels like Studio Canal tried to bury it as quickly as possible, which kind of makes sense. Um, And it's a shame for the film as well, because the whole point of the film is that it's supposed to be a really silly, like, fun action movie. And, I mean, it is a really silly, fun action movie. I think a lot of people will struggle to have fun with it because Mm. it is about a bombing that takes place in Paris. But if you try and kind of clear that from your head, you can have quite a bit of fun with this film. It's it's very, very stupid. It's It's a silly film. It's Yeah, it's a very silly film. It's about Richard Madden plays a pickpocket, an American pickpocket living in Paris, who's trying to... He keeps saying he wants to pickpocket his way to medical school. I think that's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> I, I don't oh, know. That's the thing with this film. Really you don't know what's stuff. a joke and what's not. Um, but he ends up... He steals a bag. Surprise, surprise. Um, which he doesn't realise has a bomb in it. Uh, and when he takes the purse out of it and throws it aside, it blows up. And suddenly he becomes the prime suspect in this bombing raid. Uh, which, the, for some reason, the CIA are in Paris hunting him. Uh, led by Idris Elba 
and Idris Elba finds him, kind of interrogates him for information, but then they find they uncover some weird conspiracy within the French intelligence service. And for some reason, Idris Elba decides to go rogue. It's not really clear why. <laughs> the CIA are helping him. They're sending him resources, but for some reason, he doesn't want to listen to them <laughs> because he's uh, reckless and irresponsible. He's, he says that. Cannon. But, yeah, no, he actually says he's reckless and irresponsible like a... out loud at least three times. <laughs> he sounds uh, like a kid who wants to rebel against his parents, but his parents are totally fine with it. Pretty him. much, like, yeah. No, stop trying to control me. It's pretty much. No. And all the way through... Every character, like the villains do it, Idris Elba does it plenty of times. They just kind of read out their character descriptions like they've accidentally been reading the description part <laughs> of the script. It's really, really silly. Uh, Idris Elba's doing a ridiculously hammy, really bad American accent. Uh, I mean, you can he, he can do American accents. He's done it before. He did one in The Wire for years. Mm, that's what it's oh, yeah. But, Which is like how he got, got to... Exactly. Of Whereas this, it sounds like someone doing a bad impression of an American. It doesn't sound good. Uh, Richard Madden's kind of okay. He's very forgettable. Richard Madden, people might know better from Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, he's Rob Stark, or was get Rob Stark in Game of Thrones, um, or possibly still is Rob Stark. <laughs> everyone knows he's not. He's not in any of the trailers anymore. It's obvious. Okay. The trailers they play in cinemas. Yes, it's, which which rant here. I had oh, to yeah, turn yeah. away and cover they my. Spoil ears. them. They spoil everything. Yeah, uh, James, I haven't uh, caught James up with it yet. Like, beginning of season four and obviously there's quite a major yeah. spoiler in that trailer for yeah. the end of season five yeah, yeah. so the yeah. world is out to ruin it for me but yes <laughs> either back, way back richard madden with some of his time now freed up decides to be in this film which to be honest like i say on paper it's good there are good moments in it he there's a really neat bit where he has to steal this guy's wallet and he causes a little distraction and it kind of feels like a hitman game in a way because he's kind of setting up all these different pieces that bounce off of each other that lead to him doing his thing which is kind of cool and there's a couple of decent action sequences there's a bit there's a chase across a rooftop um and there's a decent bit at the end which happens in a bank which is cool but you can't escape the fact that this film is just mind-numbingly stupid it kind of knows it's stupid so it's i guess it's okay but there is the the main kind of plot of this film this isn't really spoiling it i mean it's not necessarily in the trailer but you find this out pretty quickly it's not about terrorism. It's a front for a bank robbery. So it's yeah, kind of like Die Hard. Die hard. Mm. Uh, but these terrorists slash bank robbers are like French policemen. Um, but there's this weird group of them and they decide to, like part of the way they hide their robbery antics is to cause big protests by like doing all these fake social media things. And there is literally a bit in it where the most ominous line any of the villains say is, upload the final hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> and they say it so straight-faced. It's like, oh. Social media is taking uh, over Facebook. Exactly. And there's... the. the... I said social media. Social media is taking over Facebook. The cinema. There you go. <laughs> that one. This is a very <laughs> social media works. orientated real yeah, opinion. Yeah. But... And then there's a bit where to steal money from a bank vault, instead they go into this bank vault. There's bars of gold everywhere. There's like bits of money everywhere. They don't take any of that stuff. What they do <laughs> is go over to a computer, plug a memory stick in, <laughs> and steal money and put it on a memory stick. It's the tech villains. It's it? it's yeah. the tech, and it's so stupid. Like I said, there's some good action in it, but I think it is just so mind-numbingly stupid that it's difficult to get over. And then, and then, and then, and then. Not only is up to this point Idris Elba's good guy been actually pretty bad, he's a CIA agent that has run around Paris, beating people up, stealing civilians' cars. Um, he also says something in French at one point, which is just horrific. Uh, <laughs> but And then, when the film finally ends and you think, okay, it's over, he sings the theme song. <laughs> There's a theme song? There's a theme song and Idris Elba raps it. Oh, it's, cool. it's great. It feels like a parody of itself. So, yeah, I mean, it's, like I say, it's not fun for the right reasons, but it is a lot of fun. So I'm going to give Bastille Day like a five, a five or a six, probably a five, actually, because it okay. is just bad. But it's it's funny bad, so there you go. Is it like, yeah. Is it like fun enough that you could watch it with, say, like a group of friends or something like that? Yeah, exactly. Just, okay. There are lots of like moments where you're like, why is it like he steals, there's a bit where he steals a car from a civilian 
And it's like, oh my god, he's stealing a car. He's a bad person. But then they make it okay because they find out it's a drug dealer's car. <laughs> <laughs> like he knew it was a drug dealer's car when he stole it. <laughs> it feels like it belongs in that kind of that canon of films, like sort of Olympus has fallen and things yeah. like that. Like films that yeah. the lads will the, the watch thing is, after watching the football. It's one for the pizza. lads. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It's like it's it's kind of like a lot of people are saying, oh, it's like. Idris Elba's Bond audition tape. It's not. <laughs> if, if this is Idris Elba's Bond audition tape, he's never going to be Bond. It's more like Idris Elba's Taken audition tape. It reads more like a Taken 2, but I with see. less crap editing. <laughs> and it's like, he, he's very brash and he does really silly things like Brian Mills would do. But it's less polished than something like Bond or Born. It's not as fun as something like the first Taken and not as fun as something, or as ridiculous as something like Fast and the Furious. So it's kind of like some weird amalgamation of all of those films, but a, like a step down from that. It's still kind of worth seeing on Netflix or something, like you say, with the lads. With the lads. Before the <laughs> and, football. And the bevs. Yeah, the, the bevs. Football. What's a bev? Bev is. Beverages. Short for beverage. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I yes. thought that was slang for woman. So, uh, <laughs> so we, have, uh, we have something uh, Idris Elba. Yes, we, we, we have two and a half minutes of something which I discovered because Idris Elba sings the well I say he raps the theme song over the closing credits of Bastille Day and when I looked it up I couldn't find it anywhere because I don't think it's been officially released yet uh, but it is a collaboration with Fatboy Slim so I found another collaboration that Idris Elba did with Fatboy Slim which is a cover of Uptown Funk so here is Fatboy Slim versus Jerome Robbins beat Idris Elba with Uptown Funk that was something. Yeah, literally, that was... usually, whenever we play songs, we all talk over the top of them because we've heard them. But that, we literally sat in silence for two and a half in minutes. Awe. Listening in, in awe. <laughs> how, um, I don't know what to call that. That was something. It, it, that was the definition of a medley, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... I love, because Idris Elba, he does that. Like, there was a song that came out at Christmas that Noel Fielding and one of the guys from Kasabian did. Right. Called Can't Wait for Christmas. And Idris Elba raps one of the verses. But it doesn't tell you beforehand that he's gonna show up, ah. and it just suddenly happens. And I remember the first time I heard that, I was on, I was like in stitches because he literally just talks in his normal voice. <laughs> he's just... He just, he just occasionally just do random rapping things. Yeah, he? Or, I know he does like DJ sets across the country. Yeah, he he, he DJs as DJ Driss, and he does it on the radio station as well. And then he used to. Someone sent me a video of him rapping under the name King Driss wow. in like 2010 and he had like dreads and he was in like weird rapper gear as well it was odd yeah well, we, we, ha we have <laughs> another slightly more competent Idris Elba featuring song to end this show on yeah uh, but yes on that bombshell uh, that was a very Jeremy Clarkson thing to say it was indeed uh, but that is that is the end of this week's real opinions yeah our opinions have been real we don't have many of these left actually no, no so this is savor kind of like, them. <laughs> you kind of savor like, them. <laughs> you listen to the last radio there, season. You savor it. <laughs> now um, enjoy some more Idris Elba. <laughs> yes. We'll be back at the same time next week, 4 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon. We this will. is Picking Up the Pieces uh, by The Milk featuring Idris Elba. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.